The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hey there, welcome to the Bronx Buzz. This is Bronx Nets program where we talk to writers and journalists and reporters and editors and anybody who works in the print media and writes about uh, the borough of the Bronx. And then in our second segment, sometimes we do photographers and filmmakers and um, visual artists, but in this case, we have a Bronx author who wrote an absolutely heart wrenching, fascinating book uh, called The Woman of endurance and uh, we'll do that in our second segment but to get started let's uh, bring in the climate reporter for city limits and uh, she's also a report for america Corps member and it's our buddy liz donovan nice to have you with us liz hi gary thanks for having me uh you wrote an article which um cuts to the core of what many people in the bronx have been saying for many many years uh and and the, the headline is simply a bronx residents demand closure of uh, polluting pico plants as state ramps up renewable energy. So I'll give the little summary and then you can um, talk in detail about it. Um, the, uh, uh, the story is that the governor, Governor Hochul, has come up with a, a, a multifaceted uh, energy plan that's supposedly going to save energy and save the environment. And yet the four pico plants that are in the Bronx that are really causing a lot of pollution and airborne diseases are not being shut down. Um, you saw a protest. Tell us about what you saw and what people in the Bronx are talking about. Yeah, well, um, as we know, um, Governor Hochul last year um, accepted two proposals to bring renewable energy into the state. Um, and they were trying to choose one. They decided to go with two. Um, so that was great. But then um, as the as that is progressing, um, Bronx residents are wondering when these um, fossil fuel generating peaker plants, which are, you know, just known to be expensive and dirty energy um, and can contribute to um, health problems like asthma, um, when those will be shut down. So it's great that we're moving to renewable energy, but now let's try to remove some of the sources of pollution that have led to these high asthma rates, especially in children in the Bronx. Um, so what this protest was about was not necessarily asking them to close the plants tomorrow, but just to come up with a commitment um, of a timeline that's reasonable. So right now we're hearing from New York Power Authority by 2035, which of course is a long time from now. And that's a long time for you know air pollutants to get into the lungs of Bronx children. And that's what the concern is. I, I would say, and my, my friends, many friends who are advocates in those groups um, would, would um, I, I would say to them that they're being too kind because you said, uh, you know, if they won't, don't want them to shut it down tomorrow. Yeah, they do. They'd love to see them <laughs> shut it down tomorrow. Let's be real. But um, uh, I think the, the thing was, the, what the feeling was they were created in 2001 and um, uh, Governor Pataki at that time promised they would be shut down. And I think there's the ongoing feeling, and this goes to so many issues in the Bronx of um, you know, people not being straight with us. And then ultimately, you know, we, we, we pay the price and we pay the price in a very difficult way with lungs and, you know, our, our children and asthma and everything else. Um, so, you know, what I think I want to do w w in, a, in a similar vein, we um, did interview uh, a, um, uh, a, a, a president of uh, NIPA, the New York Power Authority Development in December. And uh, he, told us what the story was, and you can see my reaction, um, which I think is, reflects what I just said. So let's take a look at Bronx Talk, that's our other program, and uh, what uh, Phil Toya of the New York Power Authority said when I asked him about when are we shutting down those peaker plants. Per Shashank to address some of this as well, uh, but NIPA is working in collaboration with local Bronx interest groups and, and New York City-based environmental groups um, to do an assessment uh, to look at transitioning our peaker fleet to low to zero carbon resources by 2035. Um, so those transition plans are currently, um, you know, the studies are being conducted um, and that's in development and that the results of those studies uh, will be shared publicly um, when, when we get to that point. So um, that's, you know, first and foremost on, on that. As far as, um, 
the displacement of other fossil resources. I think you touched upon the the statistics, the numbers earlier, um, and I think uh, you know that's that's really up to um, I'll say you know what other market participants do mm -hmm. to those resources. But uh, I think Luke has some more details on sure, that. Sure, I'm, I'm, I will. We'll go around the room with it. I, I will say, um, 2035 is nice to hear, but of course it's 15 years away, and that's 15 years yeah. of affecting Bronx lungs, and that not going to make anybody around here very happy. So there you go. I mean, 2035, as I said there, I'm going to repeat it again. That, that, that's, that's the one thing they don't want to hear, right? I mean, I'm assuming you, you saw that um, uh, sentiment. Um, do you have a sense that there's, an, uh, you know, they can create enough energy? I know that we're cutting down Indian Point and that's created a, a shortfall. Um, do you have, uh, like, where are we at with this thing? Why won't they just you know, say, OK, you guys are right. Let's create enough energy so we don't need those peaker plants. Um, what, what's your sense about that? And the sense right now, I'm not sure. The sense I have right now is that that's part of what New York, apart, New York Power Authority says they're trying to um, look into um, and try to make sure that the city does have all of the energy needs, you know, met. We are seeing more frequent heat waves. Um, as we did this past summer, I think there were three record breaking heat waves um, where air conditioning was um, on being used at an extensive amount. So uh, I think that is something that they're looking into. I, I don't know the answer of what. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, you know, um, Peaker, I'll just give you the, and this is right out of um, uh, your article, Peaker plants around the city emit twice as much carbon dioxide per unit of electricity than regular power plants and 20 uh, times as much uh, nitrogen oxides. I, I, you know, my my feeling on this is 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 I guess personal in a way. Um, we, we've heard this so much in the Bronx. It's like they created this whole plan and nobody said, "Hey, maybe we ought to come up with a thing." Um, they they're doing a study now, right? Is that that uh, that's where what you've reported and what's going on right now? Yeah, they said they were looking into, um, they're working with the Peak Coalition, which is a group of environmental and community um, organizations that are working together to look into um, how to make the transition and make it a just transition. So I guess we'll see, but uh, certainly there's a lot of mistrust in this neighborhood and in other neighborhoods and other environmental justice neighborhoods of the city. Um, the power plants, like we said, we talked about before, uh, up in 2001. Um, they're actually a little bit newer or a lot newer than um, some of the others around the city, which go back to the 50s and 60s. Really? Um, they were supposed well, to Let me just ask you something about yeah. that. So they, my guess is that they're in Queens or other places. Mm -hmm. And are people there as concerned as the people in the Bronx are? Yeah, I think there are, there have been movements around peaker plants and studying on the peaker plants citywide. Certainly. Yeah. I, I'm, again, I, I'm I, I'm just trying to get my arms around the idea of creating a plan that supposedly is going to create. Now you must see this all the time in your work as a climate reporter. That supposedly is going to create clean energy and not looking at the most polluting, you know, um, fossil fuel processes that we've got going on. I, I just I can't figure it out. I don't want to put you on the spot and solve our problems, but it just doesn't seem to make sense to me. Yeah, I just I think, you know, we're, we're just going to have to see across the board um, a, an increased concern and a closer eye at all of these so that we're able to meet the requirements of the CLCPA within the time frame. Do you do you see, I mean, in, in your work and in, in covering, um, you know, governments and how they're handling climate change, do you see these kinds of things often, you know, frankly, in, in other things where, where um, you know, people are saying, hey, wait a minute, you're spending the money, spend it this way, and it's kind of misdirected, or is this really a unique um, a situation? No, I think it's pretty much across the board. Wow. Um, there's a there's a big. Call. I'm really sorry to hear you say that. It's just there's a big call for government officials who are making decisions and doing these studies to be collaborating with the people within uh. the communities who are most impacted. So it is it is a good thing to hear that NYPA is is um, working with the Peak Coalition. Um, to or at least they're listening. And listen, they came on TV and we had an extensive interview about all that stuff. So let's be fair. Yeah. 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 It's just, I think as long as we're working with people and 
um, that are in the communities that are being impacted to hear their input so that we're not ending up doing more harm. You know, when we talked about before when I was on your show, the um, the converter station that was set to be in oh, the Bronx. Yes. That's right. Mall I forgot areas. that was really <laughs> step one before we're now at step two or three or whatever the heck we are. Right, right. And the, and the company did agree to move the station um, to an industrial area, which was good to see. But there it does, I think, cause a little bit of frustration within the community that they're not consulted and they're not made aware of. Yeah. These, yes. You know, I I wonder, um, you know, you um, follow the politics of it as much as I do, um, that we're in a situation now where there's a whole new city council uh, and and, uh, largely women, but certainly the representation in the Bronx is grassroots. And and I could list the number of council members and then you can go up into the assembly uh, of um, young people who grew up with this stuff and know this stuff, unfortunately, like they know their own names. I wonder if there is going to be greater pressure uh, on the legislatures to handle these things. Yeah, Yeah. That, that would be that would be a hopeful, a hopeful thing. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. There's um, there's certainly an increased focus on it. And, you know, we're seeing that at the state level and the city level. So I, I think we can be encouraged by that. Uh, do, you know, I'm, I'm nosing around here. What's new? What what are you working on? I mean, I know all the Bronx stuff and we, we could talk about, um, uh, you know, the daylighting project over there on uh, in Van Cortlandt Park, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, you, you got any tips of what we should look for? What's coming out now? Um, we're looking a lot of at, infrastructure work I'm, I'm thinking about. Yeah, there's a lot of, yes, there's some infrastructure work. I'm particularly interested in the waterfront, how we're going to see the waterfront in the next 10 years. Um, and some types of resiliency that is going to be put in place at the waterfront, how that will benefit the communities um, there. Looking at some um, issues of new um transport facilities going on along the waterfront and mm-hmm. how that impacts the communities there. So there's there's a lot going on right now, both good and bad. And I guess we'll and, see what happens. Yeah, and we, we got to run. In a, in a way, it's the same story as this. I mean, social justice and environmental justice is, you know, right at the top of a lot of people's lists. That's the way it is. And to make it um, give us a half a chance, people like Liz Donovan at City Limits are uh, writing about it and reporting on it. And we thank you for your time uh, this evening. And uh, what we're going to do, folks, we are going to take a short break. And uh, after that break, we'll be back with a a Bronx author who has written a stirring novel uh, that you're going to want to hear about. So don't go away. 